Hello, uh, welcome back for another uh, lecture. In this lecture, we're going to use moment distribution method. It's approximate method, really, to solve uh, indeterminate structure. And it's really fairly easy. But there are three few things it's important you should know at the beginning. Uh, this method was first was developed by, uh, uh, in 1930s, by uh, Hardy Cross. It's basically uh, assuming that each joint in a structure is fixed, and then you find a fixed in moment, and then you lock and unlock it. What do I mean by lock and unlock it? For example, we have a, a fixed in here, we have a pin roller here and roller here. We can fix this, put a fixed end into it, and then calculate the fixed end moment, and then unlock it, put in the pin back in there, and lock it again and unlock it again. We go through theories of uh, and iteration to solve this problem. One of the things is really important to how find out the end moment to find the right sign for your moment. Uh, let me give you an example right here. For example, if I have a beam, um, yeah, and let's put a force in here, uh, just like what I have an example here, uh, uh, 800 Newton. And say this is uh, five meter on each side, and I want to know what is my moment. This 800 newton is going to create a rotation about this joint coming this way. See, it's going to come on this way, the rotation this way, and it's going to create rotation about the other side the same way. However, the fixed end here or here they're going to resist this with the equal and opposite. So if this is coming this way right this, your moment is going to go look like that. And if this load is creating moment about this point going, this will be clockwise. So the reaction here will be counterclockwise. And we're going to say for the per All right, so to calculate the magnitude for these fixed end moment, we're talking fixed end moment. I'm not saying let's take a moment 800 about this point. I'm just saying what's a fixed end moment. You go to the back of any uh, steel book or any structural book, you will find the fixed end moment formula. And if you're looking at it, it's going to be uh, PL over divided by 8. So we're going to have a uh, fixed end moment is equal PL divided by 8, and that's going to be uh, 8 hundred time uh, 10 SDL that's okay so that's come at 8,000 8,000 divided by 8 that will give me 1,000 okay it's going to be a Newton meter great so our answer is 1,000 Newton meter and look at the clock and the clockwise this is going clockwise so that's 1,000 and this is going counterclockwise, this will be minus 1,000. So you have to be careful when you do your fixed end moment, follow the right sign and calculate the right moment. This was just one of the th important things. That's one of the steps. Let me erase this. Okay, the next thing uh, you want to pay attention to, each member and a structure has its own stiffness factor. And we know stiffness factor is equal to 4E over I. So the procedure we're going to follow is basically we're going to find a distribution factor. What I mean by distribution factor, each joint has it's going to owe, it's going to have its own uh, uh, distribution factor because distribution factor is uh, based on member stiffness. So if you have a fixed end, your distribution factor is going to become zero. But if you have a far end pin, your distribution factor is going to become uh, one. And of course, in the middle, when you have the pin or whatever you have, the new distribution factor is based on a stiffness factor divided by the combined st stiffness factor. Once we have that, and we can basically, everything is a plug and play, and we can follow the uh, a simple method uh, carrying on over. Let's go ahead and work with this example right now. I want to fill in all this number I have right here. Um, let me put this right here. Uh, that's good. Member A, it's going to be a, only a B. Nice straight line, huh? And member C, it's going to be right here. There we go. Um, so 
So the distribution factor for uh, member A, because it's a fixed, we said it's going to become uh, zero. And the distribution factor for C, it's pin, we said that's going to become one. And then now if we want to find the distribution factor for uh, member uh, uh, B A and uh, B C right here. So uh, we said that the distribution factor formula is uh, D F right down here. So D F is equal K divided by a summation of uh, K, and K is equal. 4 EI divided by L. All right. Now, for member DF, BA, we're going to have the uh, Stiffness factor for BA is uh, 4 EI, 4 times E, and my I for BA is 300, times 300, and divided by L, L is 15, okay? And that's going to be divided by this, 4 E, 300, divided by 15, plus 4e of this one will be uh, 600 and divide by 20. And same way the df uh, bc comes out to 4e times 600 divided by 20 divided by this whole thing down here, which is a 4e 300 divided by 15 plus 4e 600 divided by 20. And if you do the calculation, BC is going to come out to 0 0.6 is bigger, and this one's going to be 0.4. One thing you got to keep in mind. These two numbers should come out to one. They really should come out to one. And if not, then you made a mistake. So BA, it's going to become uh, point, uh, 0.4. And it's going to become point 0.6. All right, now the fixed end moment. We're going to go ahead and we said we're going to lock this joint and make it a fixed end moment. So if I redraw this basic here, it will be, I'm going to have a fixed end moment right here. It's going to be fixed on both ends. So fixed on this side, fixed on the other side. And fixed right here. And I have this load. And that was 240 pound per foot. So if I look in the back of the book, the fixed, there's nothing here that's become zero. So the fixed end moment I have, it's going to be for a fixed end moment. It's going to be BC and fixed end moment CB. Again, be careful for your sign. If I go ahead and replace this with a concentrated load, when we usually how we do it, and this load is going to go like this, so the reaction is going to be the other way. So the reaction is going to be this way, and then it's going to go up that way, and the reaction is going to be this way for this end moment. It's going to be like that. And this is going to be clockwise positive. It's going to be counterclockwise negative. So what is that? It's WL squared divided by 8, I believe. Let me check the table for us quickly. The uh, um, fixed end moment, it's going to be, uh, based on that, it's going to be WL squared divided by 12. So I've got 240 times 20 squared divided by 12, and the both magnets are going to be the same, that's going to be 8,000. Okay, if I have 8,000, so this is positive 8,000, that's a negative 8,000, so I have negative 8,000 here, and positive 8,000 here, and that's important, because I'm going to come back in here, and in my uh, fixed end moment, I'm going to put 8,000 here, 
and on this side is going to be minus 8,000. One more zero there. So now when, once we have our fixed end moment in here, we're going to go ahead and balance these out. It's like locking and unlocking. If you lock it, then you have the fixed end moment. If you unlock it, now you're going to have a zero moment. To make this zero, they become minus 8,000 right here. This is our distribution. And then uh, now, don't go anywhere. Once you have this 8,000, you got to go ahead and uh, uh, the further down uh, have a carryover. Because now you have an 8,000 here, this 8,000, let me just make a line underneath here. Oh, good job. So now I have this 8,000. This 8,000 is a member CB. C, B. It's 8,000. It's going to have a carryover. It's going to get half to the other side. So it's going to give me a, a half. Um, so it's going to have coming over, and it's going to give me half. That's minus 8,000. So that'd be going to minus 4,000 right here. OK, so I got minus 4,000. Now we have done with here. We're going to go move on to the next joint. In the next joint, we have to do a distribution. So I got minus 8,000. I got to, again, add 8,000 to balance this out. But I cannot add 8,000, because that 8,000 I'm going to add 60% of this belong to BC, 40% of this belong to BA. So I'm going to come in down here. I'm going to say, OK, um, 8,000 multiplied by uh, 0.6 is equal to, uh, what do I have? I have uh, 4,800. And 8,000, if I multiply by 0.4, and that's going to become 3200. Okay, so now you have that. So you're going to come back in here. You're going to say uh, this 8000, it's going to give me uh, 4800 here. So balance now has to be opposite. So it's plus 4800. And then it's going to be plus uh, 3200 on this side. And there's my 8000. For this join B, I have minus 8,000. I will give it back the other 8,000, which is basically 3,200 plus 4,800. But we'll just stay here. Now, 4,800, it's on member uh, on join B for BC. So because it's a BC, it's going to have a share with its body on the other side. It's going to get half on this side. So that's going to have half on that side. It's going to come in like this, 4,800, and divide that by 2 become 2,400. 2400 okay so and then we're done with this and uh, 4800 so now we go to 3200 and divide that by 2 for over here and that's going to become 1600 and we're going to call this uh, uh, carryover CO okay so that's done okay so that's one round let's go for the second round now at joint C, I have 2,400. I got to balance this out. If I balance it out, I have to add it what? I have to add minus 2,400 to balance it. Now, because locking and unlocking, make it 0 to minus 2,400, that's a 4. So I got minus 2,400. Good. So this, let's again draw the line underneath here. So I got minus 2,400. This minus 2,400 is going to carry over here. For half of it, it will be minus 1,200. It is minus 1,200. And we're done with this joint. We're going to move over to the next joint. And in the next joint, it's going to be, uh, um, I got minus 4,000. If I want to balance this joint, I got to add 4,000. So if I add 4,000, but the 4,000 has to be distributed between BC and BA. So 4,000, I'm going to say, OK, 4,000 times uh, 0.6, that's 2,400. And 4,000 times 0.4 is 1,600. All right, so I'm going to write down here. I'm going to use the same. This color is good. So this is going to be uh, uh, 2,400. To make this zero, it's going to be positive 2,400. So I'm going to have 2,400. 
and then here I'm going to have 1600. Okay, so 1600 plus 2400 become plus 4000, which make this 4000 zero. But I'm not done, I gotta do the carryover because I got 2400 there, and that's gonna give me half of this, it's gonna give me 1200 right here. 1200, okay, and that's done. This 1600 right here, it's gonna carry over, it's gonna give me 800. 800, okay, so we're done with this round, and we're gonna start over again. So we're going to have, again, it's going to be co-distribution. This is a co, and then we're going to have a distribution, and this will be distribution. Okay. Um, we're going to start over again. I got this joint C, I got 1,200, so I'm going to make it minus 1,200. And minus 1,200 has going to have a carryover. It's going to be minus uh, 600 right here. And I'm done with that joint. I'm going to come up back here, and I have minus 1,200. It's got to be divided by, uh, I got to add plus 1,200. Plus 1,200 is going to be divided by 0.6 and 0.4. So 1,200 uh, time, uh, this mark is given up on me. I'm going to change it to 1,200 times 0.6. And that's going to be uh, 72. Okay, so that's 100, 720 here, so that's going to be plus 720, and 1,200 times uh, 0.4, that is 480 here. Okay, 480. So this minus 1,200, we add plus 1,200, which became these two, but I got to have a carryover. The carryover 72 divided by 2 is uh, 720. I have 360, okay, and then I have uh, 480, the carryover will be 240. So this is a carryover and distribution. Okay, so that round is done. Let's make a line underneath it. Perfect. We're going to start over again. I got 360. To balance this out, I gotta need minus 360. Half of it gotta go over here. And 360 divided by 2 is uh, 180. So I got minus 180 here. Okay, that balance. I got minus 600, it's gotta be balanced. I mean, I gotta add 600. That 600 has to come in. Uh, 600 times 0.6 would be uh, 360 this way. And 600 times 0.4 is 240 this way. Double check my number, I'm right. And then this 360 you're gonna have a carryover back to this way, and that's gonna be 180. And this 240 is gonna give back 120 this way. So that was my carryover, and let's go back to distribution. So I have 180, I gotta make minus 180, and that's going to give me minus 90. And I have minus 180. And minus 180 by 0 0.6 is uh, 108. And that's going to be, uh, by 0.4, it's going to be 72. So if I add 72 and 108, become 180. And 108 divided by 2, it's going to become uh, 54. So I got 54 here, and then this carryover 72 will become 36. 36, and carryover, and let's go for distribution and put a line underneath them. Okay, so now I have 54, I'm gonna do it over again. And let's do uh, minus 54 here, to balance this out. And minus 54 is giving me a 27 minus 27 carryover and then I'm going to have 90 so it's going to be add 90 to it if we add 90 to it the 60 percent of 90 become uh, 54 and uh, 40 percent of 90 will become 36 so 36 54 become 90 and 54 going to go ahead and 
carry over is going to be 27. 27 and this going to carry over is going to become 18. That's uh, good and hope run out of room. So it's going to be basically a carryover distribution there. So our next one is going to be continue until we get to zero basically. 27 we're going to do uh, minus 27 and minus 27 is going to translate to uh, um, 13.5 minus 13.5 And uh, minus 27, we're going to, by 60%, it will become 16.2. Uh, and 40% of it will become 10.8. Uh, and this 16.2 got to divide by half, which become 8.1. So become minus 8.1. No. 8.1. Eight point one, okay, and ten point become five point four here, so that become five point four co distribution. Okay, hopefully there's room down here, and now we're gonna continue doing this. We're gonna give minus eight point one, and minus eight point one is gonna translate to uh, four point oh five. Uh, minus 4.05 here and then we're going to have 13.5 we're going to add 13.5 in 60% and 40% so 13.5 will give me 8.1 and it's going to give me a 5.4 here and 8.1 is going to give me a 405 4.05 and then that's going to give me 2.7 Carry over distribution. Yeah. Where's the space up here and the space down here? So now we're going to keep continue. And 405, we're going to minus 405, minus 405, and that gives me minus 2.02. And uh, 2.02, then I got minus 405, has to be given a plus 405 at 60% and 40%, and that become uh, 243 here, 243, and then I'm going to have uh, 162 here, 162, 243 is going to translate to uh, 122. 122 and uh, 162 is going to give me a uh, 0.81. So we do one more. We have 122. We got that. Let's going to go ahead. Co and the last. This will be our last one. Oops. Okay. Didn't come out too good. All right, um, let's use a different marker here. So now we're going to have 122 here, then minus 122. And that's going to carry over. It's going to be uh, minus 0.61. And then we're going to have minus 202 at 60% become 122. And at 40% become 0.8. 122 is going to come back here and it's going to give us uh, uh, 0.61 and 0.4 here. All right. Co distribution factor. And we do one more time actually, it's going to become 0.61 uh, minus 0.61 here. Then it's going to be uh, 
minus 0.61, let's just leave it like that. And 0.61 is going to divide by uh, 40 minus points, plus 1. So it'll be 0 0.37 here. And uh, 0.24 here. And then it's going to become 0 0.24, which we're not going to carry over, so we're going to 0.4. So let's add all this up. And if I have a room, Okay, so now we did all the way down here. We're going to add, add this column, add this column, add this column, which is down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'm going to rewrite this down. That's going to, the summation of all of them is going to be summation all moment, which is bottom here, if, if you don't see it. If I add all this column, came out to 28, 23. 28, 23. This column came out 56, 47. 56, 47. This one came out minus. 56, 47, and this one is a pen comes out to zero anyway. So now we have those. We're going to come back in here. Let me erase this. Okay, so now we have this member here, and this member AB, that is AB. In A, we had a moment of a 28, 23. So this was a 28, 23. And in, in this end, we had a moment of uh, 56.47. So now we're going to find out what is our share here. Remember, when this is pushing down, this got to go probably the other way, so the reaction is going to be holding down here. So I'm looking for this reaction. This was AY. And then here we're going to have reaction coming this way. That will be B left Y, not the right part, the left Y. So let's figure out what does what these two reactions come out to. Um, let me erase right here. All right, now I have the free body diagram of this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a moment about point uh, B. So I say summation moment about point B is equal to zero. For me, for now, we're going to say counterclockwise is positive. This is a clockwise, so it's minus 28, 23. And then I'm going to have AY plus AY time. This distance was 15 feet times 15 feet. There's no load on top. And the next one I have is the moment. So that's a clockwise is minus uh, 56, 47. As you notice, uh, AY, because we assume our AY direction is down, so our number comes out positive, that means our assumption was correct that AY is coming down. So if you figure this out, AY kind of come out to uh, 56, 564.7. 564.7 um, pound. Okay. And then uh, this one is going to become uh, summation f of y is equal to 0. Going up is positive. So all I have is this and that. Therefore, BLY come out to uh, 56. 4.7, 564.7 pound. Okay. All right, now we have done this. Let's go ahead and move on to the other uh, section. And in here we have uh, the free body diagram will be like this. Well, and we have a load. And it is 240 pound per foot. Uh, distance is 20 feet. I had a moment here of uh, counterclockwise minus 54, minus 5,647 pound foot. And then this end moment is zero, okay? So we don't have any moment. And so the reaction is going to be this way. It's going to be half of that. It's going to be BL 
right y and this one is going to be basically uh, cy. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Um, let's use different color. Take a moment about point C. Summation moment about point C is equal to zero. Uh, this mark is not working right. Then we switch. I'm going to have uh, counterclockwise is positive. So that's where it's going to be minus 5,000, and plus 5,000, 647. And then I'm going to have this is going to be negative. So it's going to be minus B right Y times 20. I'm going to come back this way here. And it's going to be uh, this resultant force is going to be right there. So it's going to be, uh, and that's going to come out positive. It's going to be plus uh, 240 time 20 make it a constant in load and uh, time 10. Okay. Then we have uh, nothing. That's it. Equals zero. And B R Y comes out to uh, 2,682. 2,682.4. So now we have that, and summation f of y is equal to 0. Therefore, cy is going to be the same thing on the other y. So cy is going to come out to, uh, um, let's just write down. It's going to be uh, 2682.4 minus 240 times 20. And then plus CY is equal to zero. And CY comes out to 2117.6. Good. All right. So now we have found out that's how we find it. And then your B reaction is going to be B. Actually, your B reaction is going to be uh, so B in here. BY, I need room. BY equal BY right, which was uh, 2682.4, 2682. Oh, I'm not doing good, am I? 2682.4 plus B left Y. B left Y came out to 564.7. So that should come out to 26. Point four plus five sixty four. Thirty two forty seven. So that's basically it is. And now let's go to a robot, see what can we f if we find these in robot. Okay, let's do the same problem in uh, robot. Uh, go ahead, select a uh, new project and select 2D framing. And take a look at our problem. We can go ahead and select bar. Um, bring right over here and click on beam. And W, let's select W. I don't have it here, but I'm going to go ahead and select W. Section. And if we go 12 by 40, then 
I want to have a moment of inertia close to 300. Okay, so we're going to go from uh, 0 to 0 right here. And that was 15 feet long. And let me just put on a bar so we can see it better. There we go. And the second part of the beam was a uh, um, had a moment of inertia of 600. And close that one will be a W section 12 by uh, 70 something. 12 by 72. Add. Okay. Close and let's see if you can find 12 by 72 right here. Okay, and we're going to continue from here, go to 35 feet because it's 20 feet long. There it is. We close out of here. So that's our beam. Let's put the support into it. Click right here. It was fixed on one end. And it was rolled in the two middle section. Let's roll here and roll there. So there's our support system. Uh, next thing is um, let's give this a beam. Looks better. Let's go define the load. Now we're gonna hit dead load one add, and you gotta be careful. You gotta have dead load number two. Because dead load number one is for the weight of the material itself. Dead load number two we can here use, or we could use life load two, is for the load that we're going to go ahead and put on it. So close right here, and now we're going to go ahead and put a load on it. And there was only load in the span number two. No, I didn't want that. I'll put a load on it. So it was load on the span number two, and it was the uh, bar. It was this. And it was uh, 240 pounds per foot, so it's going to become minus 0 0.24. Click Add, and we're going to click right here, and there it is, Apply. Close out of here. Let's show it so we can have the magnitude shown too. Okay, there's our load. Okay, that's it. There's nothing to it really. And go ahead, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the calculation. All right, and then going to come back to result, diagram for bars, and right here, let's go to reaction, and I want to get the uh, F and Z, and I also want to get the moment, um, description, normalize, apply. Close out of here. Okay, we compared the result, and the result we had, it was... Uh, let me see if I can bring it over here. That's close to our result. We have, uh, in previously we had FSZ came out to 564, which is 0.57. That's good. That's perfect right out of money. And moment came out to 2682. And uh, FSZ comes out to, uh, in, uh, in B area, came out to combination. That's 3.26 that's right on money and then the uh, last reaction comes out to uh, 2.11 and we had 2011 17.6 that's it worked out good i hope this was useful and if it was uh subscribe to my channel thank you